Good morning, it's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coming up on today's show, I told you that I would learn how to tie a bow tie, and I did, and I tied my own today. I'm so excited. Also, a very powerful and prolific story. What happens when you lose both parents and you still have to grow up and make it through childhood? Will you succeed? We have the story of one today. It's time for the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee cups up, your pinkies are out. Good morning. Everybody, everybody get up. Come on. Motivation, inspiration, educating the revelation. Lamps, 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 lamps. 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 Lamps, lamps, Somebody turn the lamp on. Good morning, and we're here at Suit Yourself on Two Notch Roll. So, of course, I told you last week that I needed to learn how to tie a bow tie, and I was giving myself to June 15th, but after last Sunday's show and everyone started calling and ragging me because I didn't know how to tie a bow tie, I said, you know what, Travis, we're not going to wait any longer. We're going to make it happen. So we're back this week here at Suit Yourself. So, of course, Travis was in the studio with us, but now we're in your palace, your space. That's right. This is, this is absolutely, I mean, seriously, top of the line. It, it has this just contemporary modern feel to it, but you guys, as soon as I walk in, y'all know I was in heaven, um, with especially some of the clothing, like that gray suit that um, Jason just got a pick of, and that tie-dye shirt over there. Don't be surprised if you see me in it very soon, because I really do love it, love it. But you're gonna show me today, let me focus, is the bow tie. The bow tie. This morning I came in with my pre-tied bow tie, and Travis about had a fit. But I told him, we're gonna learn today. Absolutely. That's right, we're All gonna right, learn. So show me what to do, because show me how easy it is. All right, it really starts out just like how you're tying a necktie. Okay. So you have one end that's slightly longer than the other one. I would do mine just a little bit longer, right? Okay. Just like that. Okay. And we're gonna go across. Okay. So give it a little, you know, a little snug since we have our collar on and, and pulled up. So it'll be a little tight. But what I'll do is I'll flap this across my shoulder, kind of get it out of the way. Then what I'll do is I'll pull it up. All right, we're pulling this And kind of we'll hold it just like we're pretending that we have okay. a bow. Then we'll come back down across the front with the one we threw over our shoulder. Okay. Now, I always kind of think about a butterfly, okay. a butterfly effect. So I'll, flutter, flutter. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I'll flap it closed. Okay. Flap to kind of close it to trap the first guy in. Okay. And if you kind of give it a pull. Now, if you look to the side, you'll see a little small hole. See, right there. Right there. Okay. You see the hole, everybody see the hole good. Okay. That's where we're going to tuck the bow in the back. Okay. So from here we would go and we would start cleaning it up. Now a lot of people is loose. See how it's kind of loose on my uh -huh. neck? Now you got you have two double ends. You have a front and you have one in the back. Okay. That's where you would, you know, uh, actually tighten your knot. That's the knot is the one in the middle. Kind of give it a tug. Don't pull it all the way through or you'll pull okay. it apart. Okay. Single ends loosen, double end tighten. This is one of those products that I can't do last minute and run out the house. That exactly. <laughs> if you do 15 minutes before, you're going to be mad. If you got a date, you're going to call and you say, I'm not coming. My fiance is going to gonna be, be frustrated. Upset. Yes. <laughs> I did it. See, fam, it's so easy. So you know what? What I need everyone to do, I need everyone to come down to suit yourself. Father's so Day. what I need you to do, are you doing anything special for Father's yes, Day as far are. as times and hours and everything? No, we're gonna be here um, from 10.30 to 7, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, and 10.30 to 6 on Saturday. 10.30 to 6 on Saturday, because I know some of you are gonna wait till the last minute, but you know what? Travis is gonna get you right. Now, if you want Dad to wear that suit on Father's Day, then I'm gonna need you to come early during the week, 10.30 to 7, right here at Suit Yourself on Two Notch Roll. Not only can you learn how to tie a bow tie, and you know what? A lot of times we try to surprise Dad, but you know what? Don't worry about surprising him this year. Surprise him and bring him here, and then you can go ahead and get your suit, teach him how to tie the bow tie. That's right. Um, even bring like you said, you can take old suits and make them new. That's right, because we have the, the best ties in Columbia. He really does have top-notch stuff here. So I need everyone, find your fathers. And when you come, make sure you tell them that the Jeffrey Lampkin Show is where you saw him at. That's right. It's and you follow the rule. I told you, you can't leave until can't you learn. Can't leave until you learn. Well, I guess I can leave now. <laughs> Travis, thank you so much, sir. We really you. appreciate it. All right. Distinguished gentlemen will always come to suit yourself. Make it happen. Have a great day. We'll Bye. be back more on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Go see Dr. Terrence Tyndall at Jerome and Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day.
for beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies. Go to the Columbia Style Leader, Jerome and Company. Good morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. We're having a conversation that I think, you know, life is about journeys. And of course, when you're going on journeys, there are different things that happen. But I often tell people that it's not how you start the race, but how you finish the race. And this morning, I have a very powerful and prolific story of a young man who, imagine this, you're in life, and the most unfortunate thing happens. You lose not just your father, but also your mother. And your life takes a total transitional shift as you prepare to continue on with your education and growing up and learning how to be a man without the two people who gave you a foundation. Yet, you come back and you win among it all. And I'm excited this morning to have a young man by the name of Chris. Who is here with me? What's going on, my man? Doing pretty How good. How are you sir. this morning? I'm very good. You I'm feeling blessed. good? Yes, sir. Yes, First sir. of all, I'm loving this swag. swag. Can we say swag deep? <laughs> swag deep this morning. Absolutely <laughs> loving it. Listen, talk to me because when I first heard your story, I was floored. I was shocked. And what's so ironic, I think, is the fact that to know not you directly, yes. but to know your story and almost kind of be a part in your story at moments throughout your life, but never realizing how directly it affected you and who you were at that moment, but to come to this place now. So tell us a little bit just about yourself so then the viewers will understand how the whole journey comes together. Well, first of all, my name is Chris Rollison. Mm -hmm. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Manning, South Carolina okay. uh, when I was six. I moved up here to Columbia, South Carolina okay. uh, after my father passed. Okay. Um, my sister, my older sister Rochelle, mm -hmm. uh, she took in me and basically all my other siblings. Mm -hmm. So um, So now let me ask this question. You said, so after your father passed, you were, you were six years old when your father passed. Yes. Now did your mom, because your mom passed away as well. Yes sir, she did. Now did your mom pass first or? No, my father passed your first. Your father passed first. So your father passed away and at the time once your father passed, then your sister took in you and the rest of your siblings. Yes, sir. What was that like? Do you remember your father? Because that was a young age. You were six years old when your father passed. Do you um, remember it? Yes, sir. I remember him very well. Um, I actually, I kind of knew a lot when I was kind of little. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I did know him. Um, at the time, I, I'm assuming that's when my mother, when she was developing breast cancer, okay. after my father kind of passed. But right. my sisters and brothers, they didn't let me know since I was being, since I was so young at the time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Were you the baby of the family? Yes, baby I am the baby boy. of the family. Baby boy. So yes, it's sir. almost like it's it's a big moment because it's almost like a, a a legacy because all of you ended up completing education even with these obstacles yes. coming at you. All of you completed education. Yes. And I'm 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 here now with you at a moment where you think about your father and you think about who he was to you. What do you remember about him? Well, he was a strong man. Okay. Um, he always took care of me. He was very overprotective of me. Because you were the baby? Yes. Daddy's boy. Baby. Okay. Were you daddy's boy or mama's boy? Kind of a mama's boy. Kind of mama's boy? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Stay close to mama. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And so when, when your dad passed, what, what ended up happening with your dad? Do you remember the, the details around it, or did they kind of try to shield you from it? Yeah, they kind of tried to shield me from it. Mm -hmm. I did know he died in an automobile accident, mm -hmm. um, but... So it was they, suddenly? Yes. Out yes. of nowhere? Uh-huh. You're going through life one day, you're going to school, playing ball, playing with your cousins, in Manning, living life, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, the phone call comes, and do you remember who came and told you that daddy's not coming back? To be honest, I honestly don't okay. remember. Mm -hmm. I just remember it was my mom's birthday, and then it was in the newspaper, so I seen it, and I was like, wow, my dad just died. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of kind of emotional. Yeah. And so your father passes away. Your mother's dealing with breast cancer. You didn't know at the time mm -hmm. that she's dealing with breast cancer. All you know is there's some changes and daddy's not coming back. Yeah. Mama's here, but next thing we know, we're picking up our life and we're shifting to Columbia. Now, for 
a, a child because you were a child at that time. Yes. Did it register or make sense to you or was it just like, oh, we're going to live with big sis Rochelle? Well, it kind of sort of made sense to me. I mean, although uh, when my sister was staying in Columbia, my older sister, mm -hmm. she she always acted like my mom anyway. She would always come down to Manning just to make sure I stayed on the right track, okay. make sure I got my schoolwork done, make sure I was just staying in line. Okay. So it kind of kind of made sense that she was going to eventually take on the role as my mom. Right. So what was that like? You know, having your sister, because I think now, and my sister, is my sister, shout out to my sister this morning. Good morning, Shell. My sister is very nurturing towards me. Even yeah. though we're only one year apart, she's very protective. She's very nurturing towards me. She cooks for me when I need her to cook for me. She's like everything to me. Um, but at the same time, you're still brothers and sisters. So yeah. there's times where like, who are you talking to? And you kind of, but did the age difference make a difference? Like that you looked at her or was she still, were you still able to have that sisterly brotherly relationship? Yeah, of course. And of respect course. her as the guardian and mother in a sense at the same time. Of course. And uh, one thing I always say is, uh, I think that if it like the same situation that happened to me will happen in someone else's mm -hmm. household where mm -hmm. the brother would have to move with the sister, right. the sister will probably let them go party out, mm -hmm. do all the kind of things they want to do, but it doesn't work like that in this Rochelle household. said, no, there's some standards. There's some standards. There's some things we're going to have to do. Rochelle said, no, yeah. not in my house. You're not going to uh -huh. do it. Because she realized that there was a responsibility that still lied within her to yeah. make you become greatness that her parents will want you to become. So you moved to Columbia. You migrate over to Columbia. You're with Rochelle. Mm -hmm. Where's mom? Well, uh, I believe at the time she was in the hospital, and okay. then she came to move up here to Columbia as well with us for a little while. So mom is up here. So so we're at the point of the story. I, I need to take a break because it literally, viewers, if you could see it, this story is so powerful, and Chris is literally almost in tears right now. So I'm going to take a quick break and kind of just let everything in. I'm going to bring back Rochelle as well because your sister is here. Yes, she so is. So we're going to bring her back. And I want to talk a little bit more about this, but I want to understand we're at the part now where dad has passed, You've transitioned. This is a lot for a six-year-old. And now mom is sick. And you all are up here in Columbia in a new environment, in a new place. Listen, viewers, keep it right here. I know you're getting dressed for church. Go ahead and put your stockings on. Shift your wig, dust it. Put a little bit of flour on the tip of it. Maybe that'll make it work a little bit better. We got more coming right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee comes up. Your pinkies are out. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. All right, we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, and before we left, we, of course, we were having a, uh, a powerful moment talking with Chris, a young man hailing from the original Manning, South Carolina, of course, but living in Columbia, South Carolina, who lost his father um, in a sudden tragic accident and uh, at the age of six migrated, moved to Columbia, and begin living with your sister, Rochelle. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning, Jeffrey. Excited to have you here this Thank morning you. as well. And we're, we're gonna come to you in a moment, but we're at the part where your father passed. Yes. And your mother is sick. You don't really kind of know what's going on. Um, that moment, so you're, you're, you're here now and you're in Columbia. Take us from that point. Well, uh, I kind of knew something was weird. Mm -hmm. Just because we all moved to Columbia, mm -hmm. like I said, I didn't really know what was wrong with my mom, but I, I kind of had a sense that there wasn't something right. Um, just because of the way she used to act, right. she wasn't really acting the same anymore. How did mom used to act? I mean, she still had that smile on her face, uh -huh. but what I mean, but it was kind of like she wasn't really doing the things that she were doing for me before. Okay. So that's how I knew something was. Who took up wrong. that role? Because there had to be a void. So who who took that role to do some of the things that mom would do? My older sister Rochelle. That was Rochelle. Yes. Yeah, so did. Rochelle, you had to come in and literally at the same time now, this is your mom. Oh yeah. Who is sick? Mm -hmm. Who is ill? You just lost your dad. Right. So you're dealing with all that, and then you have to become the guardian and the parent for six other siblings. Five other siblings. Five other siblings. Five other siblings. Yeah. What was that like? 
Well, three of my siblings, along with my mom, came to live with me. Okay. Um, Chris was six at the time. I okay. had a brother who was 15 mm -hmm. and a sister who was 17. Okay. The 20 and 21 year old did not live with me, although I still did everything in my power, right. you know, to help them out. Okay. Um, I had a newborn okay. and a three year old daughter, and I was married. Okay. I am married. Right. It was not easy. Mm -hmm. But as I tell everybody, I never complained. Mm -hmm. I just did what I had to do, and I just wanted to make my mom proud right. because you know she has always done the best that she could right. for me. How did you find the joy? You know, and when I say the joy, in, in, in the midst of a situation like that, and for viewers out there, there are people out there who deal with the loss of a parent. Right. And I think that your story is so powerful because, A, Chris, you're a young man who not only lost your mom, but then lost your dad, but then you lost your mom, and you're living with your sister who has to provide attention not only to you mm -hmm. but to your other siblings as well keep you all together how do we keep the family together what were some of the things you you would strive to make sure you do well number one I just remember my mom when she was living with me she was in a lot of pain and I just remember her crying out to God she said Lord I don't know why I'm in so much pain mm -hmm. but I thank you mm -hmm. that was so powerful to wow. me Jeffrey like She's thanking God. And so I just knew that things would get better. Mm -hmm. I knew that God would look mm -hmm. over our family. He would protect our family. I just did what I had to do for the kids. There were many days when I did not do for myself, but I made sure that my yeah. family was taken care of. Yeah. yeah, I had to. Wow. Yeah. So Chris, you, you end up in Columbia. Yes, sir. Um, and you end up going to high, making it on to high school. What high school did you go to? Uh, Lower Richland. High Lower Richland High School. <laughs> good. Shout out to the Diamondbacks over there. All my Hopkins family. I love my Hopkins people over there. Hopkins, good morning to you this morning. So you end up going to LR, yes. and you graduated this year. Yep. What was that moment like? Man, that was probably the most awesome experience I've <laughs> had in a long time. In a long time. Let me ask this question because. There are people out there, and you know what? You may not have lost a father, you may not have lost a mother, you may have lost, may not have lost both or one. You may just be dealing with a situation. What do you say to a young person? Because there are moments where there's awards day, and Rochelle is there, and um, your your brother-in-law is there, and and everyone's there, but mom's not there, and dad's not there. How do you have the will and the tenacity to say, "Let me keep going. I can do this." You can do this, you know, those 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 rubs in the morning. Yeah. Are there ever times where you just like, how do you keep going? Well, I mean, first of all, one thing I do like to do, I like to make music. Okay. So whenever I do have those moments, I just go in the room, put on the headphones, and I start making beats or playing my little drum machine. Or so anything find like an that. outlet. Yeah. Got to find an outlet. So music is your outlet. Yes, it that is. That makes me excited because I love anyone who's a musician. Y'all know I do. So <laughs> music is your outlet. Now, were you involved in band or anything like that? Or you just, this is just like a hobby that you took on and picked up? Well, actually, a uh, sixth through eighth grade, I was involved with the orchestra at Southeast Middle School. Mm -hmm. And I kind of liked that. But I didn't really stick with it throughout okay. high school okay. just because I wanted to try to do something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who are some of your musical influences? Because if you make beats, that means that obviously you're into someone. My yeah. thug is about to come out right now. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm about to come out. So who are some of your musical influences? Well, uh, some producers I actually look up to. Uh, my all-time favorite producer. Uh, he's a new um, producer. He's young, like okay. myself. He, his name is Lex Luger. Okay. Um, there's another producer. His name is Sonny Digital. I really look up to people who kind of like behind the scenes who make the So beats. you like the production, the production side of it. Yes, sir. And ultimately, your goal is to because you graduated from high school where where's life going to take you now well at first uh, I wanted to attend Full Sail University which is in Winter Park Florida mm -hmm. but then uh, looking at the tuition and then the housing they don't have uh, on-campus housing let's talk about so. that let's talk about that for a moment because of course um, and I know that there are scholarships out there. And listen, for all my educators and everyone out there, today is a cry for help because I need people to step up and step out. If you know scholarships, if you know grants or anything that are out there that can help Chris, a student who lost both of his parents, um, be able to succeed his dreams, you want to go to college. Yes. You want to do music. And Full Sail University is a wonderful institution um, of higher learning. But you want to be in the production side yes, of music. So what I'm calling for today is this. The power of the internet, of course, we we all look at things, but sometimes we overlook stuff. Maybe you know of a school, is there one? Because I think there's one in Tennessee somewhere that I've heard about that actually does audio and production and stuff. 
Um, and I know that there are some majors we've been looking around even here in South Carolina, but if you know of schools, send us that information. Let us know. Write us here at the Jeffrey Lampkin Show at gmail.com and give us that information so we can pass it along to Chris. But you're having some difficulties with the financial aspect of it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, my sister, she we're like constantly up every day trying to find scholarships or just little money we can find to help me go to college. Right. But I mean, but the scholarship process, that is not easy at all. It's not easy. Especially easy. when there's like limited funding. Mm -hmm. So not every single scholarship is going to come back to you. Right, yes, right. Sir. And then some scholarships, they'll give it to you when you first actually graduate. Yes. And then after that, it's only a one year college scholarship. They pass it along mm -hmm. to someone else. How difficult has that been for you, Rochelle? Because you've been able to help your other brothers and sisters. But I guess with Chris having this unique major that he desires right. to do, it presents a little more of a challenge. Right. What makes you keep the faith and believe that it's going to work out? It's the way I raised my own kids mm -hmm. um, and along with my siblings mm -hmm. and I always told them no excuses. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to happen. He's going to college. I just have faith mm -hmm. that it's going to ha it's happen. It's going to happen. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. Chris, what is life like at home with Rochelle? Oh, um, <laughs> what is it's life like at home? <laughs> 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 for a moment. What is life like at home? Because you are uncle, but then yes. it's almost like your brother and sister too. What's yes. your um, niece and nephew name? Uh, Tamara and Jasiri Bennett. Jasiri and, and Tamara. So you're you're at home with them. Do they call you uncle or they call you Chris? No, they just call me Chris. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. Chris, <laughs> man, Chris, stop. That's, <laughs> That's what they go the whole time. So what is that like though for for you? Because but essentially you had to be a role model for them. Yes. I mean, it's actually, it's nothing different than any other household. It's like they're my brothers and sisters. I mean, they look up to me. Right. Of course, I make sure they all stay on the right track. Mm -hmm. If my niece needs help with something, I help her. You fuss at them? No, not not really. <laughs> How are you gonna say no? It's not really on the entire, so you so you bust at them sometimes. You try not to. Yeah, I try not to be. I mean, because just the fact because um they always always on track. Right. So right. I don't really have to. I get believe it because you know it look like in Rochelle house. If you get out of order in Rochelle house, Rochelle gonna be like if Rochelle can't do it, then her husband Sheldon. Y'all need to see Sheldon. That's another story for another day. <laughs> He'll set you in line. He'll get you right. So so I know we gotta wrap and we gotta go, but Rochelle. If your mom was here right now, and Chris, and I think both of you can act together, you have, you have a picture of your, your mom and mm -hmm. your, and I remember your mother, ironically, because your sister, Renee, mm -hmm. was in school with me. Um, and Tawanda, Tawanda and Renee both were. Renee and I actually took classes together, okay. and that's how I remember exactly. I remember when your when your mother died, and when you brought the whole story, then it all dawned on me, because I remember what she went through. Oh, yeah. um, if your mother was here right now, what would she say to you I if mean, she looks at her baby? I just hope she would say she's proud of me. I mean, one, because I graduated from high school mm. on her birthday. So I do. You graduated on mom's birthday? Oh, yes, yeah. I graduated on her birthday. <sighs> the That's same cool day thing. our dad and uncle passed. That same day. Yeah, because your mom passed day. on your. Yeah. That's a major yeah. day. It is. That's a celebration it every really day. It really is. And you know, it's, it's ironic, but we, we talk about stories, how life can take you and bring you back full circle to a place that can seem like the darkest place can turn into one of the brightest places. Oh, because yes. forever in your life, you'll always, you know, there was the point where you would remember that dad died mm -hmm. on mom's birthday. Right. But I graduated to show both of them that their legacy will continue to live exactly. on. Yes. And the beautiful thing that I love is that you're continuing to even go further, even now. My producers are wrapping me. <laughs> I know we got to go real quick. To any student out there who is saying, I want to do this, but I got X, Y, and Z, what do you say to them that will let them know they too can overcome? One thing, just never give up. No matter what obstacle that you might have gone through or mm -hmm. are, you are going through, just don't give up. Just stay focused, keep striving, and just do your best. Wow. Stay focused, keep striving, and do your best. Well, listen, here's what we're going to do, because the Jeffrey Lampkin Show, your story has been so inspiring, and you know what? I wish Jeffrey Lampkin had money to send you <laughs> to college and pay for college and make it happen. We don't have that. But for you two to get that brother and sister time, and I know Sheldon is probably about to kill me, but I, Sheldon, I love you. I promise I do. Listen, for you two, for the love that you have between each other and for you being able to 
um, grow and make it. The Jeffrey Lampkin Show is going to send you on an overnight trip, and you can choose either one, either to Charlotte, North Carolina, or Greenville, wow. South Carolina. And <laughs> you're going to have a ball. You're going to get to spend some time together, one-on-one -on -one time. Jeffrey's going to meet you at whatever location you decide, wow. and we're going to go out, and we're going to have a wonderful time, and we're going to celebrate this accomplishment, celebrate both of you for what you've accomplished together, and continue to realize that with love and with God, with God. all things are possible. Amen. We love y'all so Thank much. You, Thank Congratulations you. to you. I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> yes, sir. The best is yet to come. Listen, keep it right here. We got more happening. Great things are happening. Get ready for church and remember that the best is yet to come right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee cups up. Your pinkies are out. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Momo's Bistro, now serving lunch Tuesday through Friday from 11.30 to 2, and Sunday brunch from 10.30 to 2.30. Classic Southern food with classic French preparation. Dijon and shallot encrusted New York strip, fresh seafood over local green salad and vegetables, and so much more. In a comfortable yet elegant setting. Momo's Bistro, 2930 Divine Street. What a powerful show, what a powerful show. Listen, word of the day today is journey. Journey is defined as a travel between two various places, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And I chose journey today because we listened to the journey Let's start with my journey, my journey of just learning how to tie a bow tie. And I know some of you may say, what journey is that? But it was a place that I never knew what to do, but I took action to learn what it was that I needed to learn so I would be able to be successful in being able to present a bow tie. Sounds simple, right? Yet yeah, it took a journey to get there. Let's take a more serious journey, the journey of Christopher and Rochelle. They lost both of their parents. Christopher, he was young. He didn't really even understand what was happening at the time. And Rochelle, who had to instantly become not only a big sister, but the motherly role at the same time. However, their journey is still going to this day and they're still fighting and they're still succeeding. What did Chris say in our interview today? Never give up. What did Travis say when he was telling me to tie a bow tie? You won't leave until you learn how to do it. Sometimes your journey is going to have obstacles and things are going to happen along the way and you're going to fall down, but you can get back up again and you can keep pressing and keep moving forward. Listen, I want everyone to listen. Chris, we want to help him. We want to help him on his journey as he goes to college. And I have some information here. You can go to any Wells Fargo bank any Wells Fargo bank and let them know that you want to make a um, donation to this account number. You need the account number. You can't go by just his name, but you need the account number. The account number is 797-127-6907. Again, get that number, 797-127-6907. Help someone on their journey, sow good seeds, and you shall reap what you sow. Next week is Father's Day, and get ready for a great show as we celebrate fathers, all right? I've got to go. Coffee cups are up, pinkies are out, it's church time, and you've been lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Everybody, everybody, everybody <laughs> get up. Come on. Lamp, 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 lamp. When Jeffrey Just for when you, Jeff smiling out, cause God loves you. Get up and get left, 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 left. When Jeff and Lamb <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on.